If you've spent any time on the coast and you've got a bit of a curious mind like me, you might have stopped to wonder, why are there two high tides a day? And think about it for a sec. The Earth's tides are caused by the moon and the moon's gravity pulling on Earth, causing our oceans to bulge outwards towards the direction that the moon is in and then we get a high tide. But most coastal areas, with a few exceptions depending on geography, will experience two high tides a day, with the second high tide occurring roughly 12 hours or so after the first high tide, essentially caused by a bulge in the oceans pointing in the opposite direction to the moon, and the opposite direction in which the moon's gravity is pulling on Earth. So what causes this second high tide? Why do we have two high tides and two low tides a day? We only have one moon. So some of you might be thinking, but what about the sun? Well, yes, the sun does play some part in our tides. It actually also pulls on the earth and creates a slightly smaller effect in terms of tides than the moon does. But the two can add together. So when the sun and moon are roughly aligned, you know, when the moon is either a full or a new moon, we get higher high tides and lower low tides. And those are known as spring tides. But when the sun and moon aren't aligned, the two effects sort of cancel out a little bit and we get lower high tides and higher low tides. They're known as neap tides. But you'll notice we still have that second high tide pointing away from the moon and a second high tide pointing away from the sun as well. So the second high tide has nothing to do with the sun. So what is causing this second high tide? Well, we have to remember that the Earth is not stationary or static in all of this, right, as the moon just orbits around it. The Earth is also moving as well. The Earth and Moon both orbit the centre of mass between them. It's known in astronomy as the barycenter. You can think of it kind of like a scale, right? It's the point where you put the pivot to completely balance the scale with the Moon and the Earth on opposite sides. You can actually work it out for any two objects with this fairly simple equation. So the centre of mass in terms of the distance from the first object is equal to the distance between the two objects times by the mass of the second object, divided by the mass of the first plus the mass of the second. So if we plug some numbers in for the Earth-Moon system, putting the Earth as the first object and the Moon as the second object, we find that on average, the center of mass is at a distance from the Earth's center of 4,671 kilometers, which is around about three quarters of the Earth's total radius. So as the Earth and Moon orbit each other, the Earth moves a fair bit, right? It almost appears to be wobbling. You can even get systems where the center of mass is actually fully outside of the bigger object, just like for Pluto and its moon Charon, which are much more similar in mass and size than the Earth and the moon. So they almost orbit each other like a binary dwarf planet system. This actually happens to stars too, when they have massive planets orbiting around them. It's actually how we find and detect that those exoplanets are there from the star wobbling around. But what does all this wobbling do to the Earth? Well, it feels an extra force pushing in the direction away from the moon. So just like how when you take a friend's hands and you spin around in a circle and you feel this force pushing you outwards away from them, the Earth, from its perspective, orbiting this center of mass, feels a force pushing outwards, always in the opposite direction to its friend, the moon. <laughs> This force is known as centrifugal force, and you'll have felt it before if you've been on a roundabout or one of those fairground rides, you know, that like pins you to the sides of the wall. And it's what causes this second bulge in the oceans in the opposite direction to the moon, giving us that second high tide in a day. The same thing happens in the Earth-Sun system too, with the Earth experiencing a centrifugal force from its perspective as it orbits the Sun, causing a tidal bulge that always faces away from the Sun, and then these two things add together to give us those spring and neap tides. So there's a lot of things to consider when predicting when low and high tide will be and also how low or how high that tide will be as well. Roughly speaking though, two high tides will be around about 12 hours and 25 minutes apart, which is half of what's known as a lunar day of 24 hours and 50 minutes. Those extra 50 minutes is the time it takes for the Earth to catch up to the orbiting moon as it's moved around further in its orbit. So the moon is once again directly overhead and causing yet another high tide.
Before we get to the bloopers, a big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is an interactive STEM learning platform that gets you to immerse yourself in a topic so that you learn by doing, the way I personally learn best as well. They have courses across a huge range of science, maths, and computer science topics that are interactive and fun. You learn something new at your own pace, whether you're at home or on the go. Plus, they have more in-depth explanations for you if you ever get stuck on something. Now, one thing I didn't actually talk about in this video is how we actually know that a star is wobbling around because there's an exoplanet orbiting it. But Brilliant has a great astrophysics course with a section on this gravitational wobble and how we detect it using Doppler shifts. You'll even calculate the force felt by our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, due to its exoplanet orbiting around it. So if that sounds like something you want to get stuck into, you can click on the link in the video description down below, or you can head to brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky and sign up completely for free. Plus the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So thanks so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And now we're all those bloopers. And then when they're not aligned, when the moon's like in a, in a half moon phase, you then get lower high tides and higher low tide. Okay, right. I mean, we should have really figured this out before I started to try and film it. I think I'm going to write this down. Otherwise, <laughs> it's going to sound very pedestrian. <laughs> also, I feel like everyone's going to laugh at the way I say wobble, but it's a really fun word, wobble. Wobble, 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 wobble. wobble. This is known as centri centrifugal. <laughs> Sean Connery, stop haunting me. <laughs> and the earth from its perspective feels this force pushing outwards, always in the opposite direction to its friend, the moon. I'm trying very, very hard to be like the earth from its perspective. So like in its frame of reference, because people get really up in arms about well, centrifugal force. It's not a real force. It's like a fictitious force. It only exists in the earth's frame of reference because it's rotating. And I'm like, we know. <laughs> I don't, I'm just, I don't want to get into all of that. So from the earth's perspective, <laughs> the tide is high, but there's not just one. Centrifugal force causes another one. 